Hello everybody, Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today let's talk about loops in Cubase. Loops, what a subject that is. We could go in a million different directions when we get into this subject, but I'm going to focus on three different areas today that I want to share with you. The first is how do you make this work in Cubase? And then the second thing I'm going to share is some of the deeper technologies Cubase gives us when dealing with loops in relation to the chord track. And finally, I'm going to wrap it up by showing you some fun, creative ways to audition these loops rather than just the tedious way of going through your media bay, clicking on them, spending hours going through large libraries of loops. We could get into a long discussion on the value of loops, dangers of loops in today's world. Potentially, you could get into copyright problems. If you're submitting your songs and your loops aren't cleared properly. You can get into all that kind of discussion. We're going to put that on the burner for another day. I just want you to be able to use these, get over the hurdle of not being able to have fun with it because it's confusing and it makes no sense. Let me begin with an example so I can show you as quickly as possible how to put this to use. I remember hearing a discussion a few years back now by a particular producer who was saying that how he gets his session started is basically just throwing a whole bunch of loops into his project, then going from there. And that sounded like a great idea at the time, but if you try to do that in Cubase, in other words, you just start putting a bunch of loops in the project, you're going to wind up with the biggest mess of sounds that don't gel together and they're all out of tune, potentially out of time. It's not going to do much to help fuel your creative process. Let's talk about that first. When you're looking at your project window like we are right here, you go over to your tabs on the right and you click on the one that says media. There's a category in here that says loops and samples. And if we click on that, we can see that we have quite a library included with Cubase already. Every time a new version of Cubase comes out, they give us a few more packs of these loops. So some of these may look like what I have here, or you may have something slightly different, but the concept of what I'm going to show you is going to be the same. And of course, many people have access to things like Splice, which is another huge library of loops online. There's other things like that. And you want to bring these into your project and you want to use them. Let's take a typical example here. One of the packs that we got in Cubase 13 was the cinematic electronic down here. I'm going to click on this one. And if we just start scrolling down this list, see that we have things that say drum loops, hi-hats, basic things that say cinematic sequences. I click on any one of these. Typically, they'll play for us and audition themselves. Some of these may be intriguing. Some of these may be nothing that you'd be interested in. Sometimes you find things you think may not be interesting, and yet you can put them in your tunes, and it might bring everything to life for you. Let me mention this too for those that don't know. We're dealing with the audio loops, which is where we're going to start here. Basically what we're given is a four bar or an eight bar or some variation of that piece of audio. But the difference when you have a loop, not only do you get the audio, but typically there's some metadata embedded that tells the key of this piece of audio. And the tempo could have other information as well. And the idea of using loops is that you can drag these pieces of audio into your project and they're going to respond to the tempo and anything that relates to the key of the song. And these pieces of audio loops will conform and basically quickly give you some highly professional sounds just kind of gel in with your project. Well, that's the theory of it. What really happens? Let's drag a few of these in. Take this one and I'll just drag it in. Let um, me take another one here and drag it in. And as I drag them in, they start to fill out like this in the project. They create their own tracks, give me these four bar loops. Some of these are just two bar loops. They have little symbols on them that tell you that they're already in musical mode, meaning that they're going to follow the tempo automatically. So far, so good. Seems simple enough, right? Let's mix up some other ones. I'm going to go down to the one that says Bloom because I want some voice samples in here as well. So I'll grab a vocal sample, drag that in. Let's even mix it up with another loop pack. I'm going to go down this one that says Lo-Fi Dreams. Again, I get all kinds of different loops here. I'm going to grab some of these that say Synth Loop, drag these in. So I got about 10 different loops here. We should have a fantastic sounding combination of different audio sounds, right? Let's play this and listen to what it gave us. So I don't know about you, but I could never use that in any kind of situation where I would want to say that's pleasant to listen to. That's a complete audio mess. Everything is out of tune. Nothing makes any sense. Definitely the voice doesn't fit in with any of that. So what are we missing here? Because we have these huge libraries of loops and we can't just drag them into our project because they sound terrible. So for those that don't know this, a quick, easy solution 
in this situation is you got to set Cubase up to deliver some kind of basic key information. And you do that by going up to your toolbar, right click on it, and make sure that the option down here that says the project root key is visible. I'm going to click on that so I can see it. And what that does, it puts this little picture, looks like the alpha omega symbol. If I click the down arrow next to that, I can see that at the top I have a little dash. Then below that I have all the different keys. It goes from C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and on up the line. When this is set at the very beginning where it shows the dash, the Cubase project is telling all these loops, play your own way. Don't pay any attention to any kind of key. The minute I put some kind of letter in here, let me take the letter D for example. Now Cubase is actually sending some information to all these loops. And if these loops have information in them that says they're going to understand what a key is or respond to key information, all of these loops are going to now conform themselves to being in the same key. And magically, everybody is now in tune with each other. Now we have so many loops here, we still have a bit of a mess because we have orchestra playing, synthesizers, and the vocals. And all this is way too much. Just the fact that there's so much happening here still causing a conflict. But in the midst of this conflict, everything is finally in tune. The reason this happens, if you click on any one of these loops, let me take this first one here and click on it. If I look up on the info bar, this loop now contains information, says the root key. In this case, it says the root key of C. When I go back to my little dash on the selection of root key information, you can also see over here that it says transpose and it shows zero, meaning that this loop is not being transposed or changed in any way. When I change my root key information to D like we had a second ago, it now shows in the transpose field this loop has been moved to number two. Let's see what else has happened. If I go to this one, this one says that this particular loop, root key is A sharp, and their transpose number is now four. In other words, this piece of audio has been moved four steps to match our key. So by putting some kind of root key information up on the info bar, all of these loops reconform themselves, and now we can actually use these in some cohesive sense. If we want to have some fun with it right away, we could mute all these loops. And then one by one, we can bring in different sounds that we think go together. Let me start with this one. I'm going to build on that. Very quickly, we can now get some very interesting combinations of sounds, and then we're off and running. Okay, so far so good. When we're dealing strictly with the loops, and we set our root key, but what happens when we start moving on to where we're actually creating our own songs? Maybe we have a chord track, we have some of our own MIDI or audio tracks. How do we make these loops fit into that situation? In other words, they have to conform to what we've got for our own music. It's not good enough that they just kind of match themselves. For example, if I take this small phrase that I've created here, and then I go to a loop, this is out of the tech dance set, click on this while my song is playing. Again, the thing is completely out of tune with my song. There's no way I could really use that in any way. If I go to my chord track, I have an option to actually turn on the scales or show the scales. And right now I can see that it says a C harmonic minor for the scale and my first chord being a C minor. So I could take my best shot and go up to my root key and hope that when I choose C, as opposed to C sharp, D, or any of these other ones, that this will bring everything into tune. Let's go ahead and try that. From the beginning. And that worked. Try another loop. Let's try this one. I'm gonna drag that down into the project as well. And that works out okay as well. Now, without getting into too much detail, I composed my little chord progression in a minor key because I could tell when I listened to these loops, they are minor based. Let's say we didn't make this in a minor key. I'm gonna switch these chords to a major key. In other words, I'm gonna change this first C minor to a C major, and then this F chord to a major chord as well. So if I go back and play that same loop again, that definitely does not work. So one of the things Cubase gives us to possibly address these kinds of things when we have chords that we've created on our own and our loops may be completely different. I go to the track that this loop is on and I go up to the tab that says chords. I have an option here that says follow the chord track. If I go to that drop down list and click on it, I'm gonna take the option here that says chords because that's what I want it to do is follow my chords. It gives me a dialog box. 
the first option that says follow directly. I'm going to hit OK. And it performs some kind of operation on this loop. And if I listen to this loop now, it's been completely transformed. And it's following the chords. What in the world did they do to this? If I double click on this piece of audio loop, I can see that Cubase has taken this loop, put it into Very Audio, activated Very Audio, and then analyzed all the pitches in my loop. And anything it could figure out on how to switch it to the chord pitches, it did exactly that. If I go through any of these individual sounds, click through them, they're now on the exact chord notes matches with whatever chord there was. Now there's certain limitations when you do this. You basically have to have a sound that's very monophonic, a very single note kind of operation. If this was a bunch of piano chords or even a guitar strumming, this probably wouldn't do you any good at all because it wouldn't be able to tell what the main note is that it's trying to follow. But a solo instrument like this synthesizer or a lead guitar or a vocal part or any kind of orchestral instrument, this will probably bring you close to what you're trying to achieve. And not only that, you have complete control in Very Audio to actually change the notes even further. So if I went to any of my loop notes, say I go to this note here and I click on it, not only do I have it corrected from Very Audio, but by using my up or down arrows, I can even change it to something completely different. So in essence, I can completely change my audio loop once I get this far. Again, this opens up a world of possibilities on how you can use these loops and what kind of control that you have over them. So be sure to explore that option and see some of the possibilities. But now the last thing I want to show you is how you can have some fun with these loops, use them to make some kind of quick compositions, things that you may want to use to practice your mixes on, maybe practice how to master your songs. So many things you can do with these loop compositions and sometimes it just gives you that bit of inspiration when you have no other ideas from your own inspiration pool. Now the first thing to take full advantage of and use to inspire yourself, not only does this root key change what's in the project, it will also change the existing loops right in the media bay here. So again, when I'm clicking on these loops here and they're all out of tune, if I go up and change this root key, and I found out that C works pretty good, so I'm going to play that, I can now audition these loops. Not only will they play in tune in the project, they're going to play in tune right here in the media browser. And I can quickly audition these just by using my down arrow. And then as I find the ones that I like, click on them and drag them right into my project, quickly building up some sounds that match and fit together. Once you get four or five of these loops, you've dragged them into your project and they sound the way you like them. Maybe you'll have something like this when you play them together. Adding drum loops, percussion loops, and the various kind of tonal loops. Set them up in little four bar phrases. In other words, if they go longer than four bars, just shorten them down to four bars. Then once you get four bars, repeat it four different times, like I did here. And then right click, take out your mute tool and mute some of these so everything doesn't play at the same time and other things come in when other things drop out. And very quickly, you can come up with little ideas just like this. Once you get a little phrase going like this, with four bars going four times, with different elements coming in and out, do the same thing again. Get four bars going, repeat it four different times, and continue doing that until you've done it about four or five different times. It'll give you a song approximately two and a half to three minutes long, and you're going to be able to now audition all your loops in a creative way where you can hear the results of what it really does when you use these. It's so much more inspiring than it is to just click down a random list, try to make any sense out of all the hundreds and hundreds of loops that you have in these packs. I learned a long time ago that the more you can put things into a song, 
more you're going to comprehend and the more you're going to make the information a part of your own skill set. Now you have an idea how to use these loops, some of the ways you can make them sound good in your project by using the root keys or some of the options with the chord tracks. Start putting some loop songs together, even if you use them just for inspiration. Or as I said, ways to practice your mixing. So many other things you can do. You could add effects to these songs. You could test out some of your new plugins. Most of all, you can learn to take advantage of all the sounds that Cubase has given you to work with and the various ways you can use these to sharpen your own skills. So put some of those techniques to work, have some fun with them, and I'll see you next time. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we took a look into the world of loops. We got some basic ideas of how to actually make them work in Cubase, what's involved with that, why it may not work if you just start dragging loops into Cubase without knowing some of the setup involved, we learned how to use our loops also with a chord track. And then we just had some fun learning how to use these for our own inspiration. How we can audition our loops by actually creating songs with them. Giving us the ability to take advantage of all the sounds that are available and how we can use them in our own songs and productions. And we will continue to learn about all our creative options and the tools that are available to us. As always, it's great to have you guys here and I will see you on the next video.